guys, welcome to Living Waters. So great to see you guys again. We are so excited about what is happening at church, you guys. You're gonna hear a lot of announcements. We are moving to a second location. It is gonna be so exciting what is coming this spring. I love spring, all things new. And I love the definition of new. It's actually amazing. We know what new means, uh, unused, all these things, brand new. But I love the definition in the dictionary. It says not existing before made or introduced or discovered and i love that and i love that because we are about to discover so many great people so many great things as we move forward in the ministries here at lw we are so excited about what is coming this spring and summer stay tuned you're going to hear a lot more at church today it's going to be awesome Yeah. <laughs> 
He did, He did Who paid for all of our sin Nobody but Jesus Who pulled me out of that pit He did, He did Who paid for all of our sin Nobody but Jesus
breath Till the storm was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the Church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel, shall not faint By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected It's so powerful, you guys. It's so powerful. And I love just being in worship in person and in the studio. It's powerful. The presence of God changes lives, you guys. And I love what's coming, what's coming up. The ministries at LW, you guys, I told you we are going to be announcing that. Next Sunday, April 21st, we are going to be at Sir Guy Carlton High School for our second location. Uh, it is going to be amazing. And that is where church is going to be in person for the next four weeks, every Sunday. Stay tuned for the address there. We're going to be posting that, letting you know all about that. But also, we have our other location at Confed, uh, which is going to be hosting our ministries and outreaches. So we're really excited. Our prayer nights, uh, lockdown intense is coming in a couple of weeks, uh, Friday the 26th. Also, uh, City Lights Street Outreach, April 18th, Thursday. Guys, if you want to get involved in that, let us know. We're so excited uh, to be helping the homeless again in our city streets. Uh, we love what we're doing. So to be able to have these two locations is an amazing place to be. We're so excited about all these new things that are coming for, all, for us at LW and uh, meeting new people and bring people to church, you guys. We love having our breakfasts every Sunday. It's such a great social time at, uh, at Confed and also now at Sir Guy next Sunday, you guys. We can't wait to see you there. Uh, but as we get into offering, just remember all the ministries here at LW. As we move forward uh, to reach out to our homeless in the city streets, bringing packages and food and items and hygiene products uh, to our homeless here in Ottawa, we thank you for donating to City Lights today. Also, as we move forward with 457 and the events we're gonna be uh, launching this May, we're so excited to be presenting um, all kinds of new events this May. We're excited with the Cupcake Revolution, with. Uh, 457 and MBS, getting out there in the parks with the generation. We thank you for donating towards that also so we can continue our work reaching this generation. Come on, you guys, with hope and life. That's what we're all about as a church. And we thank you guys for supporting the work here at LW. As you give today, you can give through text to give the number here on the screen through the Tithely app, which is a link in the description, or continue to give through e-transfer. We thank you guys so much. Uh, so many great things coming. Stay tuned, you guys. It's going to be a great day at church. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 is for the whoever's. Wherever you came from, whatever you've done, and whoever you are, I want you to know that according to John 3:16, right now you have an arms wide open welcome from God. Anybody, everybody, anywhere, whoever. John 3:16 isn't just for kids. It's for hurting mothers, broken fathers, and all of us. 
It isn't just for t-shirts and tattoos and bumper stickers and bookmarks. Because John 3.16 is not a decoration. It's a declaration. John 3.16 is an invitation to redemption, reconciliation, forgiveness, and eternal life. John 3.16 reminds us that the story of God isn't about a few special people making it up to God, but God making His way down to the rest of us, to the whoever's. John 3.16 is what God thinks about you. You are loved, welcomed, valued, seen, and you are invited. You are not half-loved, you are not unseen, and you are not forgotten. John 3.16 is for the whoever's. John 3.16 is for you. John 3.16 is for me. Praise God. Welcome to Living Waters Online. For all of you that are out there and have been watching, you know we are still in the Easter season. And I've been talking a lot about, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, you know, while he was resurrected and walking amongst the people, teaching the people. And, you know, he was preparing them, you know, for their day of salvation. He was preparing them for the time would come that once he's ascended, there would be an opportunity for salvation and so he, he was teaching them all about the things not only what God has done but he was teaching them about what God wants to do for us in these last days and it's far more powerful than anything seen in the past and it's so great that God's people will not look back at the miracles of our spiritual forefathers because we will be so overwhelmed by the miracles we witness ourselves. And this prophetic promise comes straight from the Word of God. You know, all those past miracles, as powerful and as awesome as they were, will no longer be the proof to the world that God is alive and at work in the earth today. No, God's promise is to do a new thing, new every morning with God. You know, the days are coming, Jeremiah says, when God's people will no longer say, Oh God, move so incredible back then. Instead, we'll say, We're seeing such powerful deliverances from sin, such awesome healing, that the whole world will say, God lives. He's not dead. <laughs> look, look at the miracles He is performing before our very eyes. You know, Jeremiah 23, 8 goes on to say, listen to what he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and they shall no more say, The Lord lives, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord lives, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries that I had driven them. Wow, praise God. You know, it's clear that Jeremiah is speaking not only about the, his time, but about ours as well. The days coming refer to a time after Jesus' ascension. And Jesus, we know, is the seed of David, the branch of righteousness that reigns in the lives of God's people today. Can you say amen? <laughs> The day Jeremiah described was to come after a spiritual Israel was dwelling securely in the victory of the cross. In that day, God's people would sit under the reign of Christ as servants to His holiness. And that day also would be one in which Christ would purge His house, executing judgment with justice. And that time has come, folks, Today we're seeing more clearly than ever that judgment is falling, beginning with the house of God. And that's where it's got to begin, in you and I. And Jeremiah said the ministry in Israel had become profane and full of lust and immorality. Likewise today, a backslidden, adulterous, easy on sin, false teaching, Jezebel spirit has caused despair in the church, folks. In Jeremiah chapter 23, 10 and 11, for the land is full of adulterers, for because of a curse, the land mourns. 
the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course of life is evil and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house have I found their wickedness, says the Lord. Wow, what a warning, amen. What a time for us to discern these spirits because it's clear that God's going to bring a mighty deliverance to his church. And he's going to gather up all the lost, scattered sheep that have been led astray. Yes, even now, God is cleansing his house, exposing sin and judging the ministry because he is preparing his church for a revelation of Christ's holiness. He wants a people that are strong and powerful in Christ so that he can pour out his spirit and make room for the flock of sheep <laughs> that's coming, folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, God has promised to bless and increase his church more than at the beginning. The Bible says, so Ezekiel 36, 11 tells us, and this promise doesn't describe a church that's grown weaker and more sinful. It's a promise of a great work of God, greater than Pentecost. Wow, where thousands were saved. And it will occur in these last days. And now God is saying to you, I'm going to do a greater thing through you than ever before. Who, me, you say? Yes, you, he says. God's word makes it plain. He's got something greater and mightier for you and for his end time church. Our very faith is built on these powerful prophetic words, folks. Yes, there's a coming revelation of Jesus Christ that has never been seen in the history of mankind. And here is the greatness of such a miracle. God is going to take the filthiest, most perverse generation of all time, a generation with the hardest hearts in history, and he's going to clean them up, folks, give them loving hearts, and turn them into a powerful and holy flock. Praise God, that's how much God loves. You know, Ezekiel 36 declares, I will increase them with men like a flock, as a holy flock. Yes, folks, God is going to save a flock, a great multitude, a mighty generation, and yes, a multitude of slumbering, scattered prodigals are coming back to him because they're being stirred right now by the Holy Spirit. And we will see sinners from every walk of life saved, rich, poor, people of all backgrounds, the most notorious sinners of all time are going to be saved and added to this mighty flock. And you might say, well, there's not a new thing. <laughs> Wicked sinners have always been cleansed by Christ. And God's been doing that since the cross. And folks, that's true. But remember, sin is increasing. Wickedness is growing worse and worse. And where sin abounds, God says his grace abounds much more. And at the Red Sea, the enemy was advancing, threatening to slaughter God's people. Folks, the difference today is our enemy, Satan, and his demonic forces have already prevailed against the backslidden church, capturing and enslaving millions. But now God is going to move in. Satan and his crowd have mocked and laughed long enough saying, we have destroyed the work of Christ on earth. But God says, for my name's sake, I'm going to do a mighty deliverance. Have I not told you that when the enemy comes in, then like a flood, I will raise up a standard. Praise God, no weapon formed against his church will prosper. <laughs> Can you say amen? You know, we are the church that he's speaking of. And this is the miracle that you'll need faith to understand because it's going to come at the neediest, most critical time in the history of the church. And God will cause his flock to walk in righteousness. He will bring down such conviction that believers will literally loathe their sins and repent. And just as he declared in Ezekiel 36, verses 26 to 31, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes 
and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your forefathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanliness. I will call for the grain and the multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine amongst the nations. And then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good. And you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Wow. God is saying to his church right now, I want to do this for you. I want to increase within your midst holy men and women. And he is telling us to pray for this increase. That's right, to pray. Wow. And he gives us these promises so that we can pray them to pass. He yearns to show us his power and strength in our everyday lives. And prayer is the promise turned into petition. In other words, pray what God has promised you. Speak these promises over every area of your life. Lay down and lay hold of them until God lays hold of you. <laughs> yes, folks, we are to pray and believe for an influx of a flock of men and women to become holy followers of Jesus. And God says he wants us to do this because the salvation of so many once wicked men will cause the world to know God's power over sin and the devil. That's right, through prayer. All flesh then see and know of his works. But the fact is, as miraculous and incredible as these promises are, none will be fulfilled without God's people praying for them to pass. And why did God base the condition of his promises on prayer? Because your prayer proves that you want what God desires, that you thirst for his desires, to burn within yourself. And if those are the Lord's conditions, we can know that something will happen to us in the process that's beyond anything we can understand. We're gonna be changed from glory to glory as we pray. People are going to flock to Christ. And when people ask, how did this happen? What draws these crowds? <laughs> we will answer, prayer. Prayer and more prayer. That's right, folks. That's how we do our battle, on our knees. No, you can't work up a revival, folks. You can't buy an awakening. You can't bring in special speakers to make it happen. No, it happens because of prayer and action. It's time to start, stop looking back at the good old days. Instead, we are to be looking and heading into the powerful new days ahead. Thank God for all he has done in the past. He is indeed worthy of praise and thanksgiving, but he has saved the best wine for the last. Get ready to witness the saintliest, godliest generation of all time. They're going to be rained upon <laughs> with righteousness. And this new generation will do the greatest exploits ever. And this end time church is alive on earth, folks, right now. And more are being added daily. And to pray them in is to invite them in. They're waiting for your invitation. It's our great commission to go. And you say, amen. Pray the prayer of Isaiah when he heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go? Then I said, here am I, send me. Give him praise, folks. He's a loving God. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Jesus teach and preach about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, a massive crowd gathered outside the synagogue to hear him speak. Like any crowd, 
They were coming from many different places and many different perspectives. Young and old, men and women, rich and poor. But every person in that crowd had this one thing in common. They were tired. Tired of life. Tired of religion. Tired of waiting. And so he looked out upon this multitude of people who were scared, confused, and tired. And he told them, come to me. And that offer still stands for every one of us. Come to Jesus. All who are tired, all who are hurting, all who feel unworthy, all who feel unloved, all who have nothing left to give, come to Jesus. Bring your burdens, bring your fears, bring your biggest regrets and your worst mistakes. Bring your broken dreams and your painful disappointments. Bring your chains and bring your addictions. Bring it all and come to Jesus. Because He will receive you and He will redeem you. He will love you and He will lead you. He will accept you and forgive you. He will guide you and comfort you. He will care for you and watch over you. He will transform you and sustain you. So all who are weary, all who are lost, all who are tired, come as you are. Come today. Come to Jesus. Wow, the power of God's Word. And it's a word directly for you, folks. That's right, for you. <laughs> That's right. God is stirring in His people a standard that only through His Holy Spirit and only through our prayers can we rise to that standard that God is raising up so that we can walk in the confidence and our hearts will burn, just like the two, you know, that were on the way to Emmaus and Jesus was following them. And they said, you know, are not our hearts burning inside? And they were sensing that there was a presence and it was the presence of Christ, even though they didn't recognize him in his midst. And that's the power of the presence of God in your lives, that it will burn with the desire for your friends, your loved ones, your coworkers, to know Jesus Christ as he has come to know you through salvation. And so, yeah, this is how we fight our battles, right? In prayer, because our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the principalities that would try to block us from burning with that desire to see the will of God done in our lives. And so get out there, God is saying, go. Go into all the world. Go into your neighborhoods, the highways, the byways, your friends, your relatives, and start inviting them. And you know, and you're gonna have great opportunities to invite them to come and be a part of what's happening in your life. That they would know why you are the way you are, the changes that have been happening in your life, the desire and the excitement in your life. You know, they've seen it happen, and they are the ones that you're to start inviting. Come and see what's happened to me and why it's happened to me. Praise God, you know. And so I'm praying right now, as pastor of Living Waters, that everybody that's watching, everybody that's coming, will just be set on fire. Set on fire, because that's how revivals start. In the hearts of the people that thirst and hunger after Christ and begin to invite, and begin to draw them in and call them in. So praise God, you know, if you've been watching and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you're feeling the, the, the desire for a new life, a different lifestyle, then praise God. God is calling you to himself right now. And a simple matter of saying, God, forgive me for the way I've been living. I know there's gotta be a better way. And what I'm hearing is that Jesus is the way. And Father, I wanna have that relationship with you. And I know, as I've heard, it only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so Father, right now, forgive me. And Jesus, I want you as my savior. I want you to come into my life as my Lord, that I would follow you all the days of my life, I pray. 
And if that's you, wow, welcome to the family of God. And I encourage everyone, you know, who makes that decision and God saves by his grace, amen, then get a Bible so that you can leaf through the pages, finding out who you are in Christ and who God is through you. God bless you. He loves you so much. Looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye for now. Wow, you guys, I, I love church so much. It's so amazing. And uh, we thank you guys for joining us in person. You guys that are coming out in person, continue to bring friends. It's so great to meet all of you guys. And if you haven't been in person, come on out. We're gonna be at Sir Guy Carlton High School, which is uh, right off Baseline and Woodruff. It's not far from where we are at Confed right now. And uh, we'll get the address up for you in our posts online on our socials. Now make sure to follow us there on Facebook, Instagram, and NX uh, to get all the info and subscribe to our YouTube. You guys, great messages every week um, online at LW 2 p.m. every Sunday. We love our online church. You guys are amazing. We pray for you guys. And a lot of you guys, we'd love to see you in person, right? We'd love to see you in person. Come and join us in person, 11.30 a.m. every Sunday. It is going to be epic the next four weeks at Survey Carlton. Stay tuned, you guys. It's going to be amazing at church. And remember what God says. He makes all things new. There's new things coming for you. There's new things coming for us. We're excited about the new people we're going to be meeting, the new people we're going to be reaching. And uh, hopefully meeting some of you guys in person is going to be great too. So thanks, you guys. Stay tuned for next week at LW on the Earth.